Yay. Right. Um, I'll be talking about secure coding. I'll give you some, I hope, some simple steps and tips uh, to make your life in that perspective a little bit easier. Um, <coughs> who am I? Uh, Steve van der Baan. I should already have guessed. Uh, I'm Dutch. I work with Seven Safe, which is uh, part of PA Consulting. And I'm mainly there now as a developer, but I also do some pen testing and being consultant and yeah, certification. And uh, if there are any questions, please ask them uh, here. I'll answer them when I'm busy with the subject, then on the later stage. But first, I've got a question for you. Um, does anybody know what this car is? Bugatti. Bugatti Veyron. Bugatti Veyron. Does anybody know that one? No. It's the Kuno steam tractor. The very, very first um, self-propelled vehicle that was built. Do you have any idea what the basic difference is between these two? One exploded. Six. <laughs> no. no. The paint job. Okay. The paint job. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Brakes. I would like to see you got it in uh, rust grey as well. So. <laughs> no, the steam engine did not have a brake. Although with its top speed of an astonishing two miles an hour, it wasn't that much of a problem. Well, it also is the first registered uh, automotive accident is registered to that machine as well. Um, that's where it already started. But the brake is the fundamental difference between these two. Does anybody recognize these faces? No Formula One fans in here? Is that messy at the bottom? At the bottom, no. <laughs> this is a guy called uh, Richard Dalton. Unfortunately, that's not in racing. This is Mario Landetti. And they both have a quite uh, astonishing statement. Is that Andretti says that it's amazing how many drivers think that brakes are for slowing down. And he says, it's actually the same thing. Brakes allow you to travel as fast. And this is the point I try to get across also. Security isn't something that will hold you back, but it's an enabler to do more things. That's how you should perceive security. Especially if you look at the, how the industry in the automotive, uh, especially the racing car, developed the types of accidents which happened in the 1960s with those type of cars, or the types of accidents with these type of cars uh, are enormously different. Um, the amount of injuries or deaths are also significantly less. Unfortunately for us, uh, for us ordinary people, quite a lot of those technologies that came from this whole journey went into our type of cars and uh, make sure that we travel more safely on the roads out there. When you look at the uh, history of mainframes from really the 1960s to the type of things that now you should think you would see that type of uh, migration as well, that a lot of those inventions go in there. So actually, a lot of the inventions went more to a different side, into making it smaller, making it faster, um, making it more uh, task-focused. The whole uh, security aspect is always seen as a more sidetrack. I don't want to say that you all should now study uh, security or uh, go work as security consultants. Uh, there are a couple of crazy people like Dennis uh, that do this type of stuff, but we try to bring out information to you, uh, developers, which you can help bring to your products and make your products better. There are a couple of organizations that already started with this uh, process. OSP is one. Sans is one, and White Hat 
is also another. They bring out a list of most uh, known vulnerabilities. If you look at them, you've got the OS top 10. This is already the preview of the uh, 2013 list. Uh, White Hat has a nice graph usually with it. But last time when I spoke with the developers out about these lists, they admitted that it's nice to hear all these lists, but it comes out that gobbledygook after a while because it's too much information. Um, this is one of the things that became a sort of pet peeve for me. Because, um, that ain't helping the industry of uh, application development at all. Or counterintuitive. Fortunately, um, the guy, uh, Security Ninja, worked on that and, and he devised the security principles. He, uh, what he did, he took all the uh, OS top 10, White Hat top 10, and Soft 25, and categorized them into bigger groups and said, like, if you follow the principles of this within this group, you will block all these uh, vulnerabilities. Uh, fortunately, uh, even with uh, something like the mobile top 10, can be uh, ported to this view, and you will tackle all the OS top 10. The mo even mobile top 10, when you follow these security principles. And there are simple things like the input validation, output encoding, error handling, authentication, authorization, session management, and uh, the secure communications, resource access, and storage. And these are the principles that I want to talk with you about. So let's start with the first one, uh, input validation. Input validation is nothing more than knowing what goes into your uh, application and knowing how it gets into your application. Um, there's nothing more frustrating than having built in a security gateway and everybody just circumvents it. Um, that's the whole basic principle for input validation. Uh, be aware how people communicate with your application, or be aware how other applications communicate with your application. There are some easy uh, steps which you can take to uh, create those boundaries and really set, like, follow these guidelines, and then you are 99 percent of the time sure that what you get in, it can be handled appropriately within your application. Um, you can do, um, for example, uh, uh, validations. If you have, for example, a zip code field, um, it only consists of numbers and letters. So why should you, for good sake, accept any special characters in there? You know that it's only this time. This format, use a regular expression, and you can skip out everything else. And then you know that on a later stage, it will still be seen as a valid, uh, as a possible zip code. Someone could still type in rubbish, but that's not another thing. In that perspective, use whitelist, like exactly define the boundaries on how those data can be input, insert it into your application. And if you have to use List, be uh, as strict as possible where you can. The opposite of the input, of course, is the output. Um, I haven't seen any application which is talking with something, someone, or somewhere. Uh, um, you're always communicating towards, sending it data to someone else. And you have to be aware where you're talking to. Like I said, I'm Dutch. One of my first problems here in the UK was talking about time. Because people say here half seven. Finally, for me in the Netherlands, we also use a similar phrase construct, half seven, if you translate it literally. <coughs> for us, it means 6.30. For you, it means 7.30. It's really difficult to plan a date when you say half seven. I'll be one hour early waiting for you. <laughs> like, where do I if you know those type of limitations, how we communicate with each other, uh, then it will be smoother. Um, so be aware to what your application is talking to. Um, be aware of where it ends up. Um, 
Vinny's already showed the nice amounts of all the um, encoding, for, encoding formulas that you have for uh, CSS, HTML. As long as you're aware of where your data will end up or will be represented, that can already help you in uh, preventing all those uh, vulnerabilities. So do you prefer input encoding or output encoding? Both. <laughs> I would say don't follow just one of them, follow all these principles. Because otherwise you're still uh, vulnerable. Because you can do a lot of input uh, validation and then it's follow a specific concept. But if you're uh, it's giving it to a wrong output uh, format, it still can be vulnerable. So you really have to do both. Another nice thing is error handling. Um, we have a lot of ways on, uh, in which an application usually can go wrong. Um, but actually, uh, you as a user of an application have a different look and feel to the application than the one who's developing it or the one who's maintaining it. A good example is uh, the evacuation plan of a hotel. When you're in a hotel and something uh, happens, the fire alarm goes off, all you need to know is where to go and where to meet up as the user of the hotel. You don't want to see the whole uh, documentation, the plan, the procedure plan of the hotel itself, which they have to follow the moment the fire alarm goes off. You want to know this. So when you as a user encounter this type of information, it's not helping you as a user. The only thing you want to know is, should I refresh the page, should I go back, or should I call someone and say, hey, I've got a problem. So, this, this is one of the things that uh, it's quite easy to do, to uh, look at all the errors that your application capture and throw a generic message to the user like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, please go back. And from a uh, hacking perspective, if we get this type of information, we are starting to laugh. We started to plan like, okay, now we know what type of database is behind it, how we can attack it, and be more focused and break the application quite easily. The fourth um, is authentication and authorization. Um, this is already done quite often, also in the normal day of life. Everybody has his own uh, ID cards to identify themselves or the membership cards of Tesco or whatever. Everybody is already in their normal life on a day-to-day -day basis, like I can go here and I am allowed to do this. The same applies to your application. Um, modern app most applications that you encounter nowadays already have like two uh, versions of authentication. Quite often you see just a guest in a uh, sort of admin account normal one blog application has that as already. But be aware what type of user you get at every entry point within your application. If a user comes to a specific section where more sensitive information is uh, handled, just please ask him to re-authenticate himself. We're already used to do this type of behavior when we're with the bank. We go there, we set up a transaction, and we, when we want to send the transaction, we authenticate ourselves again, but really, I want to send this data to the other side. So, we are already known to this, use this type of information and make sure that you not, can't jump over these type of uh, sensible, sensitive uh, functions. Therefore, session management is the continuance of the previous one. As mo the moment you have authentication and authorization, you have a session with a uh, person, you have interaction with the person, and you have to keep track of that. Who is inside of your application and who is doing what? Um, be very, very uh, careful of those session identifiers. 
Session identifier is actually the replacement of his username and password. The moment I, a hacker has control of the session token, he is logged in as that user. So that's where you know, really becomes apparent. This is highly sensitive information, and you have to protect it um, as well. After a login, you re uh, supply him with a session token. From a uh, programming standpoint, it's one line of code. From a defense point of view, it means a lot of really a lot. And also, uh, make them uh, non-predictable. Please use uh, frameworks that will supply a ran real random token to you. Because if you do it really sequential, um, then you might laugh, but we do encounter them. And it's one of the uh, easiest to break applications after that, because we can just go forward and back. And be every user in there that's uh, logged in. Next, and then come to the last three. The first one, the secure communications. Um, if your application is communicating with the user, you really want to be sure that um, what <coughs> is going on between those two is private, so uh, protected. Uh, but also be aware of it that the moment you are using those type of principles, there are people that always are trying to hack it. Uh, it's <coughs> in our nature, we like to see how stuff works, and one of the ways how to see how it works is to break the sample. I think you already know what this is. Enigma machine. Enigma machine. Mm -hmm. well, it was considered to be unbreakable, but this was broken. Does anybody know what those people are? soldiers in uh, the Pacific. That's what the Americans used to secure the communications because there was a very small tribe, I think it was about 150 or 200 people in the tribe that only spoke that language. Nobody else did. And they used even code words amongst each other. So it was encryption upon encryption. And that was fairly impossible to do. Although I learned recently with when I did this same presentation in Cambridge, that the British used something similar as well. They used Welsh. <laughs> but yeah, but it's a way to uh, make sure that not a lot of people can understand the others and that the information between the user and the application is private. So, and especially when you're talking about this type of information, passwords, session IDs, so uh, your credit card number. You don't want to find your own credit card number on the page bin somewhere. Um, fun, funny thing, the second one is a repetitive uh, recommendation. Don't invent your crypto. Uh, there are, unfortunately to say, way smarter people out there that um, even don't do it themselves, that are creating teams to build a new level of crypto cryptology. The moment you start building your own cryptology and cryptography, you have the tendency to overlook stuff, and especially the, and the thing that is already provided by the community and recommended also here within the UK. Those are already proven uh, encryption standards, which everybody uh, has tested to the fullest. Another thing. Um, if you're using, uh, if you have sending private data, make sure that all the pages that contain the private information uh, are sent securely, not just the log on the page. Nothing. Um, does anybody remind, remember the uh, Firebug application on that word? Yeah? No. Fire sheep. Fire sheep, yeah. Fire sheep, sorry. Because that was that took advantage of this simple principle that all the logons were encrypted, nicely protected, 
but afterwards the session tokens were in the clear. You could just grab them and uh, reuse them. Another, th another thing with secure resource access is um, don't think that people won't find the information if you uh, try to be smart about it and try to hide it. Like the simple uh, bookcase as a door. This is a example of an, a uh, flow of an, uh, a mobile application. Especially these type of applications have a problem. Uh, problem is that quite often only the front end is secured, and this is considered already uh, protected because you always start at the first page. Funnily enough, if you know a little bit more about mobile applications, you quickly learn that you can jump into a specific page and you completely skip the whole login session. So um, don't uh, think that you're uh, protected by something simple like only a login page. So secure obscurity isn't the same as security. Don't hide it. Um, Lucky examples is also uh, the Team Mobile in America, already a couple of years ago, where a guy uh, managed to get the whole uh, phone book of uh, Paris Hilton. The only reason why he got it is because um, he, he could go onto online uh, to your own uh, phone book, and that was done with an ID number. And he started to play with those ID numbers, and all of a sudden he found the uh, page for. Uh, Paris Hilton, but fortunately enough it was uh, protected by the uh, password, which he reset by using the, uh, what was it? Name of the dog. Yeah, so he had to put that in, but then he all of a sudden uh, got hold of all the numbers. But it started out that he just started to run through all the numbers that were given there. Um, so be aware that how people interact. The moment when you give an ID number in your page, um, don't <coughs> assume that they will not play with it. There are always people that like to, when they see a number, put one up high or one down, and how to end up somewhere else. And the last one is uh, secure storage. And like a lot of things uh, also here, your security is as strong as the weakest link. And, yeah. I think this is the best way of securing, store, securely storing uh, your documents. But, uh, you have to also protect the data when it's stored. Um, nothing is uh, really annoying to realize that you really protected the whole interaction between the user and the application. And at the end, the database could be breached and all the passwords and credit card numbers came out to plain text for them, or it, especially with credit card data, if you can avoid using them, avoid that. Um, and yeah, be aware of the, all these uh, items that, are your extra, that you're getting and obtaining from a user. And how are they used? How can they be used? Why do you have to do it in the first place? These are, the, like I said, a couple of simple principles. Um, I hope that uh, you will use them when you go back uh, to your office. Thank you. We've got some time for questions. Ah, are there any more questions? You just report the mobile application to any page. Yeah. Uh, especially with Android, um, the moment you have it, have it hooked up, you can just start and then say, I want to start at this specific uh, uh, action. And then it will go jump in back. So I can bypass the login page. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Everybody wants to go on. <laughs>
Thank you very much, um, Stephen. You're welcome.